Welcome to the Foundations TV. Our guest today is Rajiv Kumar, who is a founding member of a non-profit organization, Snehalya, which has been working for a few decades uh, for women and children in distress. Um, my interaction with uh, Rajiv was at uh, Meena Sundaram's house when uh, we met for the first time um, during a meeting for Sahabibi or Gurudat. And uh, I think um, before I even welcome Rajiv on board, <laughs> I have to say that uh, one of the things that he did really well over there was while he was presenting Snehalya to us, was uh, he captivated the audiences and it almost sounded like a conversation with each one of us in the room where he walked us through the growth of the organization and how it was founded and how it evolved. I think that was such an interesting story and um, while I welcome you to Foundations TV, uh, that's what I would like to start with. I would love to hear from you about uh, Snehala, uh, why it was started, when it was started and where is it today. Thank you. Thank you, Gauri. Uh, first of all, thank you for giving me an opportunity to be here. Uh, I thank Foundations TV and I think you all are doing an amazing job. Um, well, as far as uh, Snehalya goes, uh, it goes far back in, 18, in 1989, that is 1989. Um, a school-going kid, Girish Kulkarni, had a desire to do something for the children of commercial sex workers. He had his own inspiration, he had his own uh, vision about it. We were a group of friends who met with him and uh, Snehalya was born. It was really born in his house, in his heart. And we started working with a few children at uh, Chitra Gali, which is in Ahmednagar, a red light area. The purpose was to break the nexus and the cycle in which these children get caught. These children have been conceived to be either commercial sex workers or to be pimps. That's why their mothers conceived them. And we wanted to break that cycle. It was very hard to penetrate in those red light areas. It took us many months and I would say years to win the trust and confidence of their mothers, of the pimps and of the goons and underworlds who operate from red light area. We were young, I was in my engineering college, um, Kirish was uh, completing his graduation. So I, I think it was um, really very challenging for us. We never thought that we will be doing so many things. When I look back, we didn't have a great, grand vision, but I think over a period of time, the need made us grow and do different things. So today, when we look back, we see Snehale as a very powerful force in the society. We have been working for various groups, and maybe I can walk you through some of the key projects, if you want. So we started with uh, Snehale for children of commercial sex workers. We realized that we were not being able to make significant difference in their lives by just giving them some interaction and exposure uh, because they ultimately went home to their mother's house. So we thought that we will build a home for them. We had no money, we had no land, all we had was a desire. There was one gentleman, Mr. Mutha, he was very kind and he said that you guys are young, if you guys do a good job, I would give you more land. Here is an acre of land. That's where we started. And uh, we got our first bunch of six to seven kids, somewhere in 96, 97, in this home. Uh, it was constructed uh, with 45,000 rupees, which is like a $1,000 uh, today, uh, less than that probably. Then. Very soon we started getting children who were HIV infected, who were HIV positive. Then we decided that we should create a separate section for HIV infected children and HIV infected women. So one of the first hospitals or a care center for HIV affected patients was created. Quickly we saw that a lot of people were calling us that, hey, you know, this child is being abused, this child is being uh, trafficked, this child is being exploited, can you do something? So we set up a 24 by 7 helpline, which is like similar to 911 here in America. Unfortunately, we don't have something like that in India. 
So we started a helpline kind of thing where we started rescuing children. It has been an amazing journey. Today we get more than 200 to 250 calls and uh, our people go rescue them. It's full of action. A lot of our young volunteers want to be part of that project. Later on, I think it was late uh, 2000, when we started getting calls that we have found a baby in a dumpster. We have found a baby in a police station. We have found a baby wrapped in a newspaper. Two day old baby, four days old baby. Would you guys uh, come and take them? We didn't know what to do with them. Then we decided to set up an adoption center. You would be glad to know that over 300 children have been given a new set of parents and a family and a home in very good families across the world. I have some of our children here in America. We have some of our children in India and in other parts of the world. Somewhere in 2004, if I'm not wrong, we thought that urbanization is really changing the demographics of the country. And uh, too many slums were coming up. By 2020, by 2025, almost 20 to 25 percent of India's population will be living in slums. So we decided that we should be doing something in the slums because slums were the real recruitment ground for women who were going in commercial sex, for pimps, for underworlds, for terrorism, for many vices of the society. So we have now started something called Bal Bhavan, which operates in five different slums in Ahmednagar and also one in Pune, where we go and take care of the entire family on aspects of education, health, um, literacy, then de-addiction, saving patterns. We have built some self-help groups, some vocational training for women. That was Bal Bhavan. After Bal Bhavan, we have seen that more and more cases of demand and need for women training is coming up. A lot of women want to come out of that trade. So we are focusing now on skill, providing them new skills. And I think uh, we have a long way to go. We are trying to create a Himmat Gram, which is another 20 acres of campus, which will be one of its kind, an integrated campus for HIV infected people. And lastly, which was done this year, we have created a platform to help women who have been raped, which is called Spraha. And uh, we did that launch just a few months back, where we try to provide counseling, legal help, medical help to women who have unfortunately gone through this trauma. So that's the story of Snehal. I can go on, but I would like to stop here. This is indeed very, very touching. Um, you know, it's very easy to listen to success stories, but uh, when I, any time I've heard you, I've heard you before and I'm hearing you today, uh, I feel like uh, this is something that is so close to um, to the ground. You know, it's, it, it, you know, I've seen some videos of women who have gone through so much and uh, it requires a lot of courage and it requires a lot of persistence, dedication and a lot of sincerity to believe in a cause like this and to continue to work towards the betterment of women and children. Um, and these are, these are areas where most of us would shy away from because we're happy in our lives and we're doing things that keep us happy and you know, uh, getting what we want in our lives. But to come out of that mode and to be able to feel uh, you know, how those people might be feeling and do something about them. I think it's such a touching, it's such a touching journey. Um, so uh, kudos to you and your team definitely for, for coming where you are today. So um, Raji, from what I understand, you have also written a book about Snehalya and its work. So could you tell us something about that, please? Um, yes, um, we just um, launched a, a book, Defying Destinies. It's actually a compilation of all the case studies of rescues that we have done in the last seven, eight years, best practices, learnings that we have had, what we did right, what we didn't do right, and maybe it will be a great guide for other NGOs who are working in this field. 
uh, one very interesting judgment is there in that book, which was given by the High Court. Two life imprisonment for almost 20 people in a trafficking case of two young minor girls. So, yeah, please read it and I would love to give it to you. I would certainly love to read it myself and I would highly recommend uh, anybody who is looking to work uh, in an NGO uh, and has uh, any desire to learn from this process, certainly read it. So how would they get hold of this book? Um, you know, we do not have any publisher, so Snehale is the publisher. Um, it is on our website and, uh, you know, we would love to ship it to you. Uh, if you wanted, you can send an email to the info at snehale.org and we would send it to you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for that. On that, we will take a short break and we will be right back. television serial uh, by Amir Khan and uh, the first episode itself was on uh, female feticide and uh, Amir Khan had endorsed the organization Snehalia which is pretty commendable and uh, I want to understand from you uh, of course it means a whole lot uh, for somebody who is looking into the organization but being inside the organization what it means to you? Very good question. Um, I would say that it was really a turning point for Snehale uh, being endorsed by Satyamev Jaite. For almost two decades we have been working in this area and Amir Khan production team, Swati Bhatkal, Satyajit Bhatkal, the directors of that program, they identified Snehale. Not only that, uh, Amir and his team visited Snehale twice. Our children have been so happy seeing them in the campus. Uh, he came with his entire team, they performed for our children, he launched Satyamev Jayate DVD and on May 1st we had an event and a workshop on trafficking and uh, nat uh, natural calamity uh, because of the drought condition in Maharashtra. Both Amir Khan and Anna Hazare were there for that workshop. Uh, you'll be surprised to know that every 22 minutes there is a woman or a girl, child being raped in the world. Every 10 minutes, there is a girl who is being trafficked. Trafficking is the third largest uh, organized crime after drug and weapons. And it is a very serious problem. It's around $800 billion industry. And we really want to work and motivate people against human trafficking. So, Satyamev Jayate and Amir Khan's endorsement meant a lot to us, both financially as well as uh, being known in the society. So, we are thankful to them. Wonderful. And you have also shared some of the pictures with us, uh, which are part of this presentation. We would also be putting together another uh, PowerPoint or a slideshow to, uh, to share with our audiences uh, all the phenomenal work that has been endorsed by Amit Khan um, that you do in Snehalia. Now that we've heard so much about the organization and everybody who has uh, heard this interview feels uh, connected and uh, wants to contribute somehow to, uh, towards this organization, towards this cause, and what I would like to share before uh, I have a question for you, um, I would like to share with everybody that one way to do that is by coming to uh, Saha Bibi or Gurudat show, A Musical Evening, which is being organized on September 7th, which is actually a fundraiser for this uh, wonderfully, uh, wonderful organization run by extremely sincere people. Uh, and uh, you can, we can all be very uh, assured that 
this cause is a genuine cause. So we can be assured that uh, the efforts that the organization team of uh, Sahabibir Gurudath is uh, putting or all the efforts are going to go towards a very sincere cause and um, we're all very excited actually. It adds to the excitement of the organizing committee as well. Um, my question to you though is, um, you know, how does this benefit the organization? Well, um, the obvious answer is that it financially benefits the organization. But more than that, we look towards these events as um, embracement of our team our work and we feel that more and more people are being part of Snehale family. I would welcome all the people who are going to come for that event to Snehale. If you come to India, please visit Snehale in Ahmednagar. It's around 180 kilometers from Mumbai. We would love to have you there. Our children would love to have you there. And uh, we run a radio, uh, that's Snehale radio, it's an FM channel. And we would love to play that for our children and for the people there in Ahmednagar to know that how much of love and affection we are getting here in Boston. Thank you to Meena Sundaram, to you, and to the entire team. I know it's a very big team who is trying to put together this show. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That really makes us feel uh, very special. Um, all the effort becomes really, really authentic um, by listening to everything that you have shared with us today. So thank you so much for coming and I would also personally like to wish you good luck. I know after spending 10 years in this country, you are moving back to India uh, only for this cause and your dedication towards this cause. So uh, we're very proud of you um, as a community and we wish you all the very best from the Foundations TV. Thank you.